We have gathered as people of faith everywhere gather to stand under the word of God, to seek wisdom, to gain insight, and to be affirmed and replenished, to be equipped to love, and to hope and work for a better world, and to be commissioned to serve. We've come to unite our hearts with all who seek peace and goodwill in a complex world of beauty and need. We come in the name of Jesus. Friends, the faithfulness of the God who provides and sustains, the amazing graciousness of Jesus Christ who invites response, and the presence of the Holy Spirit who inspires people everywhere be with you all. And we sing, Great is Your Faithfulness. our hearts in prayer. Holy God, by your Spirit's power you have led and inspired your people through many ages and stages of faith. You revealed the wonder of your gracious presence through Jesus Christ, in whose name we have gathered today. May we use this time that we have this morning to stand under your word and reflect on your will for us so that our faith may be enriched to your glory. We praise you for your mysterious ways among us, for
for your creative presence in the midst of human affairs and for your faithfulness to us and to all humankind, even during the times you seem absent because of our tragedies, our frailties, our conflicts and our doubt. You have revealed your will through men and women throughout history and you revealed your word supremely in Jesus. Your spirit still speaks today of the urgent needs of so many across our planet, our nation and our community. We hear the echo of your voice calling us to hear the cries of those who need to be released from their misery. We have, but we have heard your voice drowned out by political agendas, cultural arrogance, religious complacency, corruption, self-interest and hatred. We acknowledge to our shame that we are caught up in the complexities of the world's agenda. There are so many needs in our world that we feel compassion fatigue. We have discovered how difficult it is to fulfil our best intentions. We pray that you lift us from the burden of guilt and despair and free us for loving service to the best of our ability with all the resources that we have. Hold us close in your love that we may serve you faithfully in, Jesus, in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. In the name of the God who shares divinity with us, in the name of the risen one who shares humanity with us, in the name of the spirit who inspires us, we receive the gift of forgiveness as Jesus Christ says to each and every one of us, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everybody. And thank you especially to those for, who are, might be watching on at home. We haven't forgotten you and you're very important to us. I've got a story for the youngsters, so um, I'm going to ask the youngsters to come down a bit closer. Perhaps I might pull up. This is a story I've had for a long, long time. You can see it's very battered. It's called Mr. Gumpy's Outing. Right. <laughs> this is Mr. Gumpy. Okay. I think you might, you might have to hold this. <laughs> And there's his lovely little house and there's the river and there's his boat. One day Mr Gumpy went out in his boat. May we come with you, said the children. Oh, yes, said Mr Gumpy, if you don't squabble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I come too, Mr Gumpy, said the rabbit. Oh, yes, of course, but don't hop about. Right. Oh, what about me, said the cat. I'd like a ride. Very well, said Mr Gumpy, but don't chase the rabbit. Okay. What about me, says the dog. Will you take me with you? Yes, but don't chase the cat. <laughs> Ooh. Have you got a place for me, said the sheep. Yes, but don't keep bleating. Oh, have you got room for me, said the calf. Yes, but if you don't, trample about. Oh, can I join you, Mr Gumpy, said the goat. Yes, but don't kick. Right. So, well, for a while they all went along and had a lovely time, didn't they, in the boat? And guess what happened? What do you reckon happened? The goat kicked, the calf trampled, the chickens flapped, the sheep 
bleated. The, the pig mucked about, the dog chased the cat, the cat chased the rabbit, the rabbit hopped, the children squabbled and the boat tipped over. Boom. And they all fell in the river and got very, very, very wet. <laughs> oh. Then Mr Gumpy and the goat and the calf and the chickens and the sheep and the pig and the dog and the cat and the rabbit and the children all swam to the bank and climbed out to dry in the hot sun. We'll walk home across the field, said Mr Gumpy. It's time for tea. And there they are walking home to Mr Gumpy's house. And there they are all having a lovely time sitting around the table. Goodbye, said Mr Gumpy. Come for, t for a ride another day. Well, he's a bit... <laughs> well, I want to say that Mr Gumpy reminds me of Jesus because Jesus says, come with me and we'll have a lovely time but I don't want you to be mean to people. Right? I don't want you to call people bad names and I don't really wish you wouldn't squabble. And what do we do? <laughs> we all make mistakes, don't we? Yeah. And then we feel bad. It's like falling in the river. When we feel, oh, I wish I hadn't said that. I wish I hadn't done that. And Jesus says, it's okay. I still love you. Come back, to, come to my house and we'll have a good time. So Jesus understands that we don't always get it right, but he still loves us and he invites us to come to his house and have, have a meal with him. That's what we do with communion, isn't it? So we've got a little song. Thank you, Simon. This one's called Jesus Put This Song Into Our Hearts. In today's Old Testament passage, we hear how long ago and far away God's people felt bereft as they said goodbye to Moses, who had led them thus far, but now they had to go on without him. Well, the story goes on in the next chapter to say that they entered the Promised Land and conquered the Canaanite, Canaanites and they lived happily ever after. Well, we know that's nonsense, isn't it? because the Bibles, the stories are written by the victors and we know that in the Middle East the conflict has gone on and on and on and on and it's very, very sad. Well, for us, the, the, the Gospel reading tells us how to overcome the hatred between warring factions over territory we're called to love God 
and to love our neighbours as ourselves. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for that introduction. Um, to be honest, this is one of the readings that I have difficulty with. Reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 to 12. Moses dies and is, burned, is buried in the land of Moab. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negev and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in the valley of the land of Moab, opposite Beth Bethpah, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigour had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days and then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequalled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of Israel. And the Gospel reading comes from Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 to 46. The greatest commandment. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced, silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, an expert in the law, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Of these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. And he said, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On Tuesday evening around town, a lot of youngsters will be having a lot of fun celebrating Halloween. And many of them will be totally unaware that Halloween is the evening of All Hallows, the evening of All Saints, which all, on Wednesday is All Saints Day, when traditionally 
the Christian church has paused to remember all the people of faith who through the centuries and personally remembered still today lived out their Christian witness by loving God and their neighbours as themselves. Indeed, the golden rule appears way, way back in the Old Testament and is repeated from the Old Testament by Jesus in the Gospels. From ancient times, the people of Israel and on through the church history, the saints were honoured as the faithful ones <coughs> who loved God and who cared for others. All Saints Day honours those who have led the, led the way in that endeavour. Paul often re refers to the people he writes to as the saints, the saints in Corinth, the saints in Ephesus, even when he had to pull them back into line because they weren't behaving very well. So saints are not perfect, but they hold up to us a model of how important it is to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. For us, it's a good time to remember those have shared their faith with us through our journey. We can go right back to our Sunday school days, our Sunday school teachers, the people who, who were kind to us and who were role models for us in our growing up. Next Sunday, we have to say farewell to our Minister David. And it's the end of another chapter in the story of the life of the congregation here at St Andrews and the people of God in this area, remembering uh, Parwin South and our friends who now worship at Murnion. We're already feeling regret as we wonder what lies ahead when we embark on a new chapter in the life of our gathered witness of the faithfulness of God through all our changes. Now on the back wall here, which behind everybody, is a plaque on the wall. And it's honouring an earlier minister, the Reverend R. W. McLean. And especially for those of you at home, there's, here's a photo of it because it's behind us all. And we can't see, only I can see it, I can see it there and it's huge, I can tell you. <laughs> In 1936, the Reverend McLean retired after 40 years of faithful service and his last appointment was as the Minister of St Andrews, where he and his wife had served for 14 years. Ministers often stayed a lot longer than that. Some stayed as long as 30 years because they were uh, installed as life ministers. And uh, in October, they, of the 1936, they prepared to leave. And the congregation had to think about what to do next. They wondered who would be follow as they were helped by the presbytery to find another minister. Now, doesn't that story sound familiar? <laughs> that chapter in the life of the congregation closed but there were probably children there, maybe the same age as Kira and Lockie, who might still be alive today, who might remember the Reverend McLean. And I guess that there'll be children who'll remember the Reverend David. But I'm sorry, David, we, we've stopped putting plaques on walls and on things because the whole wall would be absolutely, totally covered if we put a plaque up for everybody who's ever been a faithful witness in this congregation. The whole, I think the walls would collapse from the weight. And I've been to one church where there was a, a cross on the wall and the plaque said, this plaque has been put here in memory of Fred Nurk. <laughs> so we think it's not a great idea to put plaques on walls anymore. But I expect that the Reverend McLean, being a man of faith, in God's future, believe that long after he departed, the congregation would still be blessed 
by the participation of youngsters, such as those who are among us now. Those of us of my generation can rest comforted that the rising new generations will continue to call our call to work towards the making of a better world. As members of this community of faith, we've faced many changes. The church face is facing many changes. And we've had to say goodbye to a lot of our loved ones who have passed to their reward. And uh, that's, the, that's how the world goes. People of my generation have to move over sooner or later and make room for our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. And I'm looking around and I can remember Coral and Elizabeth providing music for us. Uh -huh. uh, we've just lost Dorothy Myers, who was a leading light at Parwin. Remember Bill from the back there? Ian and Gladys? Wallace, yes. June and Harry, yeah. And Joan, and Bertha and Ruth, and Jean, Jean Lindsay. There are so many others and we can, we, those of us who have been around long enough can remember those who we love dearly, who shared their faith with us and who were a great influence on this congregation. There have been so many over the years. And uh, of course there are living members of the, this church who can't be with us and are not forgotten. So it's all Saints Day on Wednesday and it's a good time to remember all the leaders and all the people who enriched our faith and shared their many, many gifts with us along the way. Well, the Old Testament story today, the book of Deuteronomy ends with that chapter, the death of their great leader Moses, who realised that he was in the presence of the Holy One, and we know the story of the burning bush. The Holy One who called him forth to risk all to lead his oppressed people forward through many challenges to wander towards the land of milk and honey. And through it all, Moses, sustained by God, coaxed and conjoled and bullied and bossed and pestered and pleaded with the people. And finally, finally, he dies as he nears the end of the journey. <clears throat> so Moses didn't enter that promised land riding on a great elephant in triumph or a big white horse. He didn't even have a, a memorial. He was buried in an unmarked grave. Moses led his people so far, but then it was Joshua's turn. And as I said before, the story is written by the victors. And for those who take every word of the Bible literally true, well, <clears throat> you know, Israel had every right to uh, massacre anyone they felt like. Well, we don't perhaps agree with that story. It seems that for human persons, it's what we do along the way. Moses didn't enter that promised land, but what he did along the way is what counts. And for us, who need to, who we, we're facing our old age and know that we're not here forever, what counts is what we did through our lives, the people we love, the children we nurtured, the friends we had, the talents that we put to good use. All those things, it's the journey that counts, isn't it? Because we're not the Hebrews of Moses' story, but we too journey, following, for us, we follow the footsteps of Jesus, who has, who has given us what our priorities should be. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself.
Of these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. We know from the stories of Jesus and from the words of the prophets just how love is made known. We know the love of God is active when we look forward to peace and justice rather than what's just good for ourselves. We love when we welcome asylum seekers, when our generosity meets disadvantage and when we are role models of compassion and goodwill. That great commandment to love God and our neighbour are expressed in attitudes. We may not, we may not see a great future of perfect peace, but we're on the way to the promised reign of God. <clears throat> Our readings today brought us to the end of chapters, the end of Deuteronomy, and we're nearly at the end of Matthew. And very, in about a month, we'll finish our year of Matthew and we will begin the year of Mark. That way forward is to continue the way of Jesus to the glory of God. Amen. Are we going to, are we going to sing? Because of All Saints Day, I'm inviting those of you who'd like to, to light a taper to remember those of our loved ones who have left us, those of your friends and your loved ones who have left. You might like to do that during the singing of this next hymn. And if we run out of time, there'll be time during the last hymn. Okay.
Let us pray. Wondrous Creator, you inhabit this world in which there is so much conflict, but you do not shy away from the suffering and shame of our troubled world. You are there in the midst of wars and conflict, walking with us in our fearful and darkest hours. You never deny that your love is for all your creation. Help us to walk in the dark and scary places and give us strength to witness to your abiding love. May we be compassionate and full of faith so that we might bring your love and peace to this troubled world. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you enriched us with such a wonderful universal church. We have so many faithful examples to draw from, so many stories of those who faithfully trusted in you. We lift the universal church to you. Today we remember all saints. May the stories of those from the past encourage us and we may we be able to shine your light so that the future generations may look back on our examples and feel the same trust and conviction that, you, that we do. We ask all these things in the name of him who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And I think it's now my turn to share the news of the week. Um, just before we go to the first one, I'd just like to ask those that are involved with the Monday afternoon teas, um, I think we will call a ca we'll cancel that next week because it's in the middle of the long weekend and there seems to be a lot of people away and a lot of those that are volunteers away. But what we'll do is we'll encourage people to come to the shopping centre of the following fortnight and join in an afternoon tea there. So if you know anyone, if you could please tell them and I'll get notices out to them all. Thank you. Um, save the date. I think we've all been thinking of this date for a while now. Um, next Sunday is David's final service and that will be celebrated here with the um, the presbytery being involved in the final service. And then finally afterwards we'll join with David, his family, friends and all those who have known David over the years over a light lunch. Oh, please don't bring anything because it's being catered for. Thank you. Um, the notice, I noticed in the notice sheet that Dorothy Myers passed away a week, or so, a week ago and um, they're having a memorial service but we don't know any details at this stage but most of you probably remember Dorothy with love. Um, if you haven't donated to the Frontier Services Barbecue, donations are still being collected and uh, I guess we'd like to tie that up soon as possible. Thank you. Um, Friday, November the 10th from 3 to 4 p.m. And I can't read that. Time. Oh, the, I know what it is, yes. It's the um, Advent boxes will start and they'll be available for on those dates, yes. And now I'm going to hand over to you, Simon, I assume you're the one in the chair. Okay. Um, this morning we're going to do a little bit more on our, as part of our mission study. And um, as you know, David is leaving us next week. Um, and it's a little bit hard for us as a congregation to think about what we might do next. Um, but as Judy mentioned, it's really uh, end of a 
chapter and obviously this congregation and its previous congregations has been here in Bacchus Marsh for over 150 years. So perhaps we have to keep that in mind, um, perhaps when we do this study. Um, and so yes, moving up forward is going to be hard. Um, and why now is perhaps the question, um, because we're not, David hasn't left us yet. Um, but some of these things that we need to go through with our presbytery to potentially call a new minister, which I'm sure we'd like to be able to do, uh, do take some time. Um, so we're doing this at the moment. So this is the last time we um, did this. We asked about what do you value about St Andrews, and the text is a bit small on there. Um, but these are some of the responses that, that came through, and if you can't read that, um, uh, please have a chat to me later. But we got, I think, 36 responses, and that's really quite useful us to understand what the congregation is thinking about what it values for St Andrews, and we can start to get some ideas um, through that. Where we're going now is to ask the next question, um, which is um, how do we move forward or how, what, what, what does it mean to move forward uh, into our next chapter? And this is quite a hard question to ask. Um, and so we'd ask you to respond to that, but perhaps think about this as not necessarily th anything specific. I think Barbara pointed out to me quite just, just before the uh, service to say, just put down what your first thing that comes to mind and then we can try and work with that as part of our mission study uh, group. Um, but to, to sort of get people thinking, um, we've got a short video of a, couple, a few people who responded and we've also included some videos uh, from earlier in the year when we, uh, at Pentecost when we asked people what the dreams and visions of our congregation was as well, which sort of ties into this question, um, you know, what, what's, what's next or what do we, um, how do we move forward at St Andrews? So watch that video, Samuel Malcolm, thank you. Our way forward at St Andrew's Church is to continue to love and serve God through church fellowship service on Sunday, led by a minister, elders, worship leaders and church members at the uh, Bacchus Marsh and Pentland Hills congregation. Also continuing our support for church and group programs such as the Bible study group, um, the Connect Worship, the Soul Foods, Dad's Army, the Neighbours Place, the Pastoral Care, Frontier Services, uh, the Men's Group, um, Men's Breakfast, um, WAGS, the Triple C Program, and also the St Andrew's facility, church facilities that offer play group uh, so that we can reach out to more people uh, share God's word and help make a positive difference in people's lives. What you're doing today it shows it perfectly. This is how it should be. This is how to encourage people to come in. Informal, friendly, and everybody loving. It's important to have a sense of belonging. I think it's important to help each other become stronger in faith and to reach beyond our comfort zones and I think it's important to for us to um, properly explore what we believe together. I, I would like to see us um, bringing the gospel into everyday language and applying it in our worship and our worship being um, something that people can understand of all ages and I'd like the words of our worship to be appropriate for all ages and abilities and, and I think that will make a difference to the way we um, move into the community in acts of Christian life. I think the way forward for St Andrews is to bring the community in, show up our building, uh, show what our congregation can offer to the community and to families. This is the question we're asking. Uh, what is our way forward at St Andrews? And so you can respond a couple of ways. One, if you prefer, and that would be great because we'll try and get everything in this format in the end, is to scan those QR codes on the back of your um, pews. But you can just write on 
down with a pencil um, what you might, how you might respond to this question. And remember, it doesn't need to be specific. Uh, and you can respond, uh, and we can, um, if you'd like, that can be put in the offering bowl um, or handed to myself or one of the church councillors, and we'll take those responses and, and um, work on this um, as part of our mission study. So uh, that'll be part of our offering, so I'll... Judy? Yeah, so if, um, you're welcome to do that during our offering uh, or during the rest of the service, and uh, we'll, we'll take those responses. When Simon has time to get to the organ, we'll worship God with our offering. service of our lives as signs of our gratitude and willingness to make your love known through our witness to and love for our neighbours nearby and far away. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you need more, do you need more time? I will give you a little bit more time. To, right? I think we'll let, we'll give you another couple of minutes and we'll let, then Simon will serenade us with a tune of his own choosy <laughs> while you have another minute to respond.
This last hymn is my sheer indulgence. It's an evening hymn, and I think I'd like it for my funeral. We never get to sing it because we don't have evening worship anymore. But it's a lovely hymn. Good. The day you gave us, Lord, is ended. Thanks, Simon. forth as people of God who by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit we are strengthened to love. May God the Father watch over you. May Christ walk with you in guidance. May the Spirit flow through you richly and generously. This, this is the God we adore. <laughs> 